everybody, welcome to one, two, three, four, five. I guess of the five of the influence, the influence podcast. Um, it's been a journey. You're just kind of like talking a little bit about it. Uh, this person that you're going to be seeing, hearing from. Let's see, she's a queen. She's like um, best uh, to me personally, the number one dancer to me personally in the world. Uh, she's a recent graduate. She's going to be going to an amazing college. It's kind of hot, literally and figuratively. Um, and she's doing amazing other things. So welcome, Ashley Brackett. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I am so to be on here today, this morning, um, and just chat about, you know, my journey and just try to give some insight into how to make your journey work. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's a journey. Um, so before we kind of get everything, you want to tell everybody like where you are right now, what you've been up to? Yeah, so I'm at the mountains. We are still in, well, the yesterday, I, or two days ago, mm -hmm. three days ago, the government just like released everyone to uh, non-essential businesses to open mm -hmm. but everything here is still pretty like closed but it is much smaller of a town than like wake forest raleigh and some other places so we're just kind of chilling in the mountains so mm -hmm. that's been fun awesome. um doing lots of online classes which <laughs> isn't the best but we're making it work how far are you in senior year um so i graduated early Okay. So I graduated January 27th. Mm -hmm. I still, if we had graduation, would graduate with my class. Mm -hmm. But um, I graduated early. So I'm glad that I don't have to focus on schoolwork during this time because I mm -hmm. think that would be really hard. Um, but yeah, with school, just waiting for this whole thing to be over with, if exactly. it ever is over with. <laughs> exactly. I feel like someone was, I saw something online where it was like, when all this ends, we're going to have the biggest... It was like St. Patrick's, Cinco de Mayo, Mother's Day, graduation party pretty much ever. Oh, uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess you kind of like started already, but if you wouldn't mind just telling us like, who are you? Where are you from? You know, who are you? Yeah, so um, my name's Ashley Brackett, and I was born and raised and have lived my whole life in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I started dancing when I was seven. Mm -hmm. I did all the sports you could name until I started dancing. I did basketball, soccer, what? tennis. I did basketball at the Y, and I scored for the wrong team, and my mom pulled me out of basketball. <laughs> she said, this is not going to work. <laughs> she almost named me Jordan after Michael Jordan, but good thing she didn't because so I funny. did not live up to his legacy. Um, <laughs> but so then I, they put me in dance they were like this is the lot like if this doesn't work we don't know what is like <laughs> and I was still kind of doing tennis on the side of that but I danced for about three years and still until I started competing mm -hmm. and I danced at um, a studio in Wake Forest called Wake Forest Academy of Fine Arts and I danced there for probably let's see seven till eighth grade mm -hmm. so I don't know what how many years that is I think yeah. it was like nine years I was, wow. no, like eight years I want to say I was there um how often that was like, yeah I was doing five days a week probably oh. three hours a day so not as much as I do now mm -hmm. but still for as young as I was it was a lot yeah um so I'd go to school come home go to the studio from like five to eight six to nine every night um and that that kind of set me up for understanding like time management right away from when I was younger. And, um, I really like fell in love with it because once I got to like my seventh and eighth grade years, I was just kind of realizing like, wow, like I could do this for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and realizing that I needed to go somewhere. This was after going to LA for a summer. I was like, I need to go somewhere that better suits my needs and can push me more so freshman year i moved to a studio still in wake forest just down mm -hmm. the road called no limits dance center right and is that the same one um uh, is it hampton hampton yes hampton gotcha. and i yes we went to no limits together um and i'm still there until the year's over but um i've been there all my four years of high school um and it's been the greatest gift like i the the best decision I've ever made mm -hmm. in my life, I think will have ever made like my whole <laughs> life. When I'm 80 years old. This is still going to be the best decision I've ever made. But I just like, once I got there, I saw 
how much bigger the picture could be. Mm -hmm. And I was just at a place that was more um, like up to the times, like right. just really fitting into all my needs basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been there the past four years and yeah, that's just kind of my dance journey as far as that. Um, there's a lot of things in between, in between all of that that we can get to, but that's kind of the overall layout of what my journey's been. And that's, that's awesome. Like kind of going back with the first dance studio that you were at uh, from seven to, you said seven years old to eighth grade. Is that yeah. So like where, I know you, you know, you kind of breezed over it a little bit, how you just couldn't, that, that's where you had that time management. You had those like, um, there's a mentor of mine, he calls them like private victories are better than public victories. So you had those like pub, uh, private victories of like understanding time. So like when you first started doing dancing, like, was it like you were just doing everything so beautifully and elegantly or like, what was that journey when you were learning? <laughs> I see the eyes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was not, I mean, I'd say like the first two years I danced, it was like, mm, we don't really know if this is going to work out. Like I had natural flexibility. Like I've, I, I was watching baby videos the other day and I used to walk on my toes, like my what? toes curled over. So that's a sign <laughs> yeah. um, that I was meant to do this. But at first, no, it was not, um, it wasn't like it clicked right away mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I do have like a lot of natural ability. Like I can hear music. I have, I'm flexible. Like I didn't have to work for my flexibility mm -hmm. like a lot of people do. And then I have good feet and like, i just do have a lot of natural ability, mm -hmm. but I did have to work for, you know, work really hard in each style to, you know, try to, there's no such thing as perfection, but try to perfect it to my best. But yeah, I would say my biggest growing year at that mm -hmm. studio was sixth to seventh grade. Why is that? I, I don't know why, but like looking at videos, it's like mind blowing. <laughs> like I look at myself in sixth grade and I'm like, okay, like looks like a little kid like that just likes to dance. And then seventh grade, right. it's like, oh, like she actually can dance. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it's fun to go back and watch videos, even though my seventh grade self, I still cringe at, but uh -huh. it's better than the sixth grade self. Um, but yeah, that was like a year, my biggest growth year. I don't mm -hmm. exactly know why. I think I made a, I probably like grew into my body more than, you know, Being sixth grade, I was a little string bean. And then seventh grade, I was actually like starting to like get muscular and like look like a dancer. Right. Um, instead of just like a skinny little girl. Right. <laughs> but um, I think that that year I definitely really took it more, more serious mm -hmm. um, and realized that, again, this is something I could do for the rest of my life. And I like how you said that, like, you acknowledge the fact that you did have these natural gifts that, like, you, you, you know, you like, you're flexible, you understand music, like you had really good feet, which like for people who don't know about dance, the only reason I know about that is I used to do like Taekwondo. And so like, if you, I, I hurt my toe really bad. Cause when I was, when I was warming up for a roundhouse kick, I flexed instead of pointed my toe. And so let's just say my toe met the pad. So like, mm. I know it's not something easy when you just wake up and you're, you have amazing feet, but like, I, I like how you acknowledged you had the skill but you just didn't say like, oh, like I have this skill, I don't need to worry about anything, but that you saw it as like, oh, I have it, but now I need to work 10 times harder. Right. And that's a like, I, um, ha I've taught at my studio this year and I assisted last year. That's another thing, like in anything you do, you know, you're going to have whatever you're drawn to. It's probably because you have gifts that help you succeed in whatever that, you know, goal is. And yeah, I see that I'm flexible and stuff like that. And then I, as I'm teaching younger kids, you know, I'm like, you know, you're flexible, but that's not going to get you. That's not going to last you till you're 40. Cause when you can't put your leg behind your head, what are you going to do? Right. So you have to, you know, use those abilities and yeah, work 10 times harder just because you have the natural ability. Like I've seen dancers that can't even get their leg past 90 degrees and they're better than the dancer that can put it behind their head. Wow. Like simple stuff like that is just like kind of an analogy for many other things. Mm -hmm. Like just because 
it doesn't look as pretty doesn't mean it's not, you know, that person probably had to work way harder than the person with the natural ability. But yeah, for anything, I think that, you know, never rely on what you feel comfortable, like, oh, I got that in the bag. Mm -hmm. You have to be, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So I, so this is good. We we're talking about earlier dancing and we'll come back to the little, to the other parts that you just said, but like, how was family life? I know I've, I've met, I've had the opportunity and like pleasure of knowing, of the, yep. knowing mom and dad, but how's that? Yeah. Um, I think being, being an only child, it's definitely different than if I had siblings, all the attention's on me. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but my family's like always been very supportive of anything I wanted to do. You know, years ago when I would talk about, you know, I don't know if I want to go to college, if I want to go to college, if I'm going in state, out of state, what college is right for me, you know, they were very supportive in, you know, take a gap year, don't go to college, go to college, like do what I feel drawn to do. Mm -hmm. And even till this day, my dad's like, you know, if you go to college and you don't like it after a year, like don't go anymore. Like right. if that's not your thing, then like just do your thing. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I know that not all parents are that supportive of mm -hmm. their kids' dreams. I know that just from the studio moms um, and like some of my friends' parents who don't dance but have other ideas in mind and you know it's very like set in stone. Mm -hmm. um, so I am very grateful to have parents that support whatever I do. Um, and yeah, so my mom usually always travels with me unless I'm flying. I usually go by myself. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that's usually with the company that I work for, which we can get into. Oh more yes. Later. I'm so excited um, to get into that. <laughs> but if we drive, my mom always comes with me. My dad usually comes to the in town stuff just because of work and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, actually there was, I had my first, my mom had to go. Um, my grandpa passed away a couple months ago and she had to go to his funeral and we had a competition. I was like, you know what, mom, it's fine. Like I'll just drive myself. Like it's whatever. So mm -hmm. we were went, going to Charlotte. So I drove myself, my dance teacher and another girl that was staying in the hotel room with me. And I never realized like how much the support from my mom being in the audience, even when I don't think about it, like means to me, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I was just off that weekend, but like I had like a complete meltdown backstage. Like ne this has never happened before. I couldn't stop crying. I was saying to my dance teacher, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> I like, I, like I had already danced so I had that over with, but yeah, like, and it, I didn't even like now looking back, I'm like, it's cause my mom wasn't there. But mm. at the moment I didn't even realize it's cause my mom wasn't there, but, and there's some kids, parents who don't come to all the competitions, all the stuff. And so I am really grateful that my parents have the ability and do come to all my performances and stuff like that. So. How do you, how, how important do you think support is just in not only in dancing, but in everything that you're doing and other people are doing? Yeah, I think support is, is everything. And, and I've had my journey with finding friends that support what I do because, you know, like in middle school, especially in like my prime time, like to me, mm -hmm. that was my prime time. Like, right my body was changing. I had to keep up with everything that was going on. I was learning how to like time management, how to go into high school. Like that was. It's like when you really put all your chips and everything. Yes. And I had to decide, you know, about certain friends. Like, are they really, mm -hmm. you know, when I get a text like, Hey, everyone's hanging out. Want to come? And I'm like, no, I have dance. And their response is, well, can't you just skip it? Mm -hmm. That like not, have, having a friend that understands that that is wrong to say and would like my friends now never ask me to they would like they just know how important it is to me mm -hmm. and that this is something that I'm putting my heart and soul into every day because I want to do this for the rest of my life so having friends that support you and don't try to change you know your goals that is a huge thing that I've had to deal with um, support from your family. Yeah. But if you don't have support from your family, you better have support from your friends. Like, and don't settle for friends that don't support you because there are people out there who will support you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to take a step back and look at who you're surrounding yourself with, because that's, that's a really 
big factor in being successful. Mm. She, wow. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's my, I love, I love doing this on Monday because it's, I love Mondays, but like, this is like, it's kind of selfish. I get so much like energy from this, but like what yeah. you just said is, is I feel like it's something that we don't, we don't learn. Like there's no class for it at school. Like, emo- like, of course, like financial intelligence, but like emotional intelligence. And I know when some people hear that, they're like, oh, it's woo woo. But like, you know, you just said it the best way because when everyone's doing something, whether it's dance, whether it's art, whether it's cooking, like soccer, whatever it is, there's that point where you have to like separate yourself. And like some people yeah. take it the wrong way where it's like, oh, like, okay, Ashley doesn't want to hang out with anyone anymore. She thinks she's, she's, she's better than us. Like, okay, who does she think she is? But it's like, it's understanding that for you to do something you've never done, you have to become somebody that you've never been. And that it's part of kind of like that process. But the way you just said it's perfect. Like you have to do, you have to realign yourself with friends who are going to help like propel you. Cause of course you still need that time where even for me, that's like one of the hardest things and like the past couple months has been good, but like you need that time where you're shut off everything that you like to do, like dancing and everything like that, working out. And you know, it's hard. Cause like you, sh- mm-hmm. you shut it off and you're like, I could be dancing right now. I could be working out right now, but you need that kind of time to like revise and kind of like what you're doing right now. No, just kind of like that time to really like reset. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, so before we go back to the journey, actually, well, no, we're going to go back to the journey and then I'll ask that, but you mentioned how you went from the first studio to now the, the studio that you're, that you're on and now you're finishing. Like what, what are some, why did that studio is why is it different and like what are some things you learned and struggles that you had there and you see with even with other people who you're there? Yeah, um I think well I was coming from a studio that had a huge rec program. So in the dance world and in really any sport, there's right. always like there's levels. Okay. So the studio is coming from had a huge rec program. So they mm-hmm. probably had 320 students and only a hundred of those studio a hundred of those students would compete. So the rest of those students would just take classes throughout the week and only be on stage during recital. They'd have a recital dance, Um, which is great. But when you want to go to competition every weekend and, Mm -hmm. you know, really make this your life, Mm -hmm. that there was just too many people for me to feel connected to anyone. Not enough focus. And yeah, and there was just a lack of, it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff Mm. that when you're at the top, like I was, Mm -hmm. me and my like four best friends who Mm -hmm. also moved to my new studio with me, (laughs) when you're at the top, it's like, you feel like you have to sink down to everyone else's level when people don't step up. And so moving to this new studio, there was no stepping down. Mm -hmm. It's everyone has to step up. And that's the biggest thing because when I got there, you know, I was probably at the same level as people like Hampton and four friends that came with me and a couple other girls, like we were all at the same level. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just me and the three or four people that I was surrounded with for the past three years on the elite team at the old studio it was now there's eight of us. So mm. who's going to, who's going to pull who up? It's like the big fish in the, in the little pond. And it's, it, it, and it didn't feel like that, mm-hmm. like in a negative way. Mm-hmm. It was like, there's just so the studio that I'm at right now is so supportive. I mean, yeah, there's like little bits of drama everywhere. There's, it's all girls. You, you can't get away from <laughs> it. Um, from ages five to 18. I'm the oh. oldest one, but, yeah. um, like you can't get away from that but everyone is so supportive and everyone is is there because they love it Mm -hmm. not because they just want an after school activity Mm -hmm. and so that's a big difference too surrounding yourself with people who have not the same goals but who want to work just as hard as you do because it's definitely hard when you're the hardest worker in the room there's and, no one to pull you up. And and you say that, and I like the way you say that because some people might be like, oh, like what what does she mean? But it's more of and I feel like you said it the best, like when you when you're at that level where you're like, oh, like you're looking around and you're like, I'm the only one here. And like a lot of people think it's like once you get to the top, 
because I mean, of course, you're, you're always there's always somebody above you, of course. Right. But like once you get to that level, they think like, oh, like you've made it. But in all reality, when you get there, that's you just got like you just said it. That's just where you just got started. Like when you get to that level, you're like, okay, I think I'm good. And then you turn around and you're like, oh, there's I'm only on like level two out of like. Yeah a thousand <laughs> yeah yeah and there's a girl at my studio who from day one that like, i stepped into the door she was i think 12 mm -hmm. when i moved to the studio and like she pushes she's my duet partner for the past two years but uh -huh. she pushes me like no other like every 9 30 at night and we're uh -huh. in duet rehearsal and i'm like can we just like mark it a few times and she's like <laughs> ashley we need to do it full out and she's like 13 and i'm like you're right Yep. Out. Like, <laughs> like people like that where like I've just found inspiration in so many different ways and at the studio that I'm at now like that's where I was able to learn not learn how to choreograph but like mm -hmm. yes learn how to choreograph like um practice choreographing we have choreography right. classes we have improv classes we have strengthening classes on top of all of our technique stuff and our rehearsals and stuff like that. So there was just a lot of different like branches mm -hmm. that I was able to, um, that I like got exposed to that the other studio didn't offer. You were just like thrown into it and just kind of like yeah. pretty much find your own way into it inside of it. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's basically what I have to say about that. But So, you know, kind of going on towards the next thing is, um, I want to say, like, I'm pretty sure she's a mentor of yours. The coach, the owner of the, uh, I only know her from her Instagram Temperate. handle. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, what's, what's the relationship with her? Like, how, how did that kind of come about? Because I feel like I see y'all, like, everywhere and everything like that. And I can definitely see the smile yeah. on your face already. She is, like, my, everyone at the studio calls them her, her their second mom. Uh -huh. I texted her yesterday for Mother's Day, and I was like, if you were my mom, you'd kill me. Uh -huh. But she's like my big sister. Like uh -huh. we seriously tell each other everything, mm -hmm. like everything, <laughs> like her and I have told each other things that no one else knows. <laughs> and it's just funny that like I stepped into this studio and now I have like this relationship with this woman who like mm -hmm. inspires me in so many different ways. Like mm -hmm. not just the dance side of things, but like just as the person that she is and she, if she sees this she'll probably laugh she'll be mm -hmm. like yeah what <laughs> but um and she really like had a relationship with each one of her students mm -hmm. and wants each student to succeed which is something that you can't find everywhere right someone who genuinely cares about each person and not only their dance, you know, what they do at the studio, but becoming a smarter dancer, a smarter person, mm -hmm. a better person, things that outside of dance are just important. So she's focusing on all around, not just one thing. Yeah. And I mean, she's very, I mean, she's tough. When we clean dances, we clean. Like <laughs> she is of that. She can choreograph her butt off. She can, I mean, she's such a good teacher, but the things that you take away from her classes, like without even realizing it, you're becoming so much smarter because she forces you to think mm -hmm. and just a better person. Like it's not about you, especially mm -hmm. in a group dance. It's not about you. It's about the team. Mm -hmm. You got to take the eye out of it. Exactly. Save There's that no for your I solo. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so do you think, and you kind of mentioned, do you think it's important to have that person in your life who kind of doesn't sugarcoat things? Oh, like, for like, sure. like they'll tell it to you extremely dry. Yeah. And like, she is that mm -hmm. type of person. Mm -hmm. Like if something, like anything that goes on out the studio, outside the studio, she sees it on social media or something and she doesn't agree with it, she will, she will hit you up. <laughs> so be expecting it. That's awesome. Um, but it's just because she cares. And I think that it's so important for someone in her position, she's a teacher and influencer to, you know, not brush things aside. Like mm -hmm. we are her girls. We are a part of her studio, a part of, you know, the, her creation that mm -hmm. she's going, this is year seven of her owning the studio. Wow. Um, she might have to be next. I might have to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might have to do so, a double. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. But yeah. yeah, she she has this platform basically to influence and um, motivate, and she does that. She doesn't waste that, you know, title mm -hmm. that she has, or think that she's you know too busy, too good to you know, talk to her girls every day, right. you know, invite them over to the pool. Like it really is a family and, and like that is so important because that's something that I did not have at the other studio. And it's hard when you're, you know, yeah, you may be the best, but when you're in a room doing your solo and you're getting no support, you get no love, like what? <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's, it's, even if you're the best, even if everyone knows that you're the best, you're at the top, you're the hardest worker, but no one shows you love. It's like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. It's that time when you're, it's that night and it's that time where you're just kind of like looking around and you're not really receiving that love and you kind of second guess yourself, like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so during, during the time I'm, I'm saving for, for the company that you're with, because that, that stuff, like every time first of all you'll see her handles her instagram everything on here and i advise you follow her um <laughs> if you're sliding into her dms make sure it's good stuff no, no bad things Thanks. but i always like message them like please do it like this song or like like sh when she does stuff you can just see it's well put together like it doesn't she doesn't just put on a song and go because i'm pretty sure she could like when when we i forgot to mention we work together at the Y, um, and her nickname was Goldilocks. I mean, I wonder why. But she, when she would do dancing with the kids, I could, you could see that like coach kind of come on. And like now hearing about your mentor, I can see how that relation came because she would be, of course, when she was talking to the kids, she was making sure that they're doing the dance, but she'd always make sure that they do it to the best, the, the best perfectionist way they could. But also best of their ability. It. Exactly. But yeah. also understanding it. Because I remember I still have, and I, I think I can still find someone who used to do those <laughs> videos. And it was just so cool seeing, like, I personally love the dancing when they did it because, like, the power it gave, because well, mostly it was the girls who would do it. The power just gave you can see these girls being comfortable like doing dance and everything was amazing so commend you for that um Thanks. what are you know i know there's a lot of great things that happened but what are some struggles that you know that have happened the obstacles you've had to overcome being in you know high school being an athlete who is kind of not just doing something temporarily but wanting to do something long term like what are some struggles that you've kind of been through maybe still going through and that you've had to overcome that other people can learn from yeah, um, I'll do like one that's kind of dance related and one that's not. Um, being told no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both summers that I went out to LA, I auditioned for this program, um, kind of like the one I'm on now, but it was with a different company, mm -hmm. um, to tour and assist them, um, work competition, do all that. Um, and both years I was, after the audition, I got a no. And that wasn't easy to take. Like it was something that I had all my middle school years, like dreamed of doing. It was everything I wanted to do. And I now looking back on it, I'm like, I was not ready for that opportunity. <laughs> freshman, eighth grade summer and freshman summer were the two years I auditioned. Like, no, I was not ready. And if I did get on my dance career up until this point, would be so different than what it is now because those no's like that second no especially that one like hit i was like okay i'm done with them i was like they don't want me then they're not gonna get me i was like okay they're gone so what's the next opportunity so i went back to the studio and i worked harder and now i'm with this incredible company that like if i was on the other one i probably wouldn't have even you know shooted shot my shot exactly. <laughs> what I'm trying to say. exactly this company <laughs> but it everything happens for a reason and i truly believe that and until you like experience that like revelation you want to understand it but if you have you know what i'm talking about like everything truly happens for a reason those no's have led me to this opportunity which i think is much bigger than that other one was mm -hmm. just saying um and then i think the second thing is missing out that's a big, I mean, not that I, there was, there's never been a point in like high school where I'd be at the studio and I didn't want to be there. It was just like FOMO. 
just fear missing out of what was going on. Um, and like quarantine has been kind of hard because I've seen some of my friends, but then like my parents are still like, Oh, you don't need to go do that. And like, I, I understand, I completely understand, but it's like, Oh, all this time I couldn't do anything. And now I have all this time and I still can't do anything. And it's like, trying to find, you know, and some nights like I get really upset about it and I'm like man I haven't seen my friends in like months I haven't hung out with anyone in months I've been dancing five hours a day for 40 days straight and it just gets really like I get in my head and then I and then I sit back and I'm like I hang out with a friend for like two hours and I'm like all right I'm good all right <laughs> like, I just need that little uh not to not be a dancer for a little bit and then I can jump back into it but yeah I definitely think that hearing no in anything is so difficult because it's like it feels like it's the end of the world because you've you've um trained or studied for this moment mm -hmm. and you've spent all this time to get to this one little spot and it's like all that time's gone mm -hmm. And then it's like, so I have to start over? Yeah, you do. <laughs> you gotta and, start over. And that, I swear you are like literally just speaking, speaking my mind. Cause like that, <laughs> it's, that, it's like the hardest thing. And one of the things you do with like the kids at Leaders Club is that like, I, of course, like without teaching them like, you know, stuff regarding spirit, mind and body. But like one of the most important things is just like, there's always like another way. Like there's always legally, there's always another way of being able to do something. But like the way you just said is perfect because everybody, they think that like, oh, if I, we work out, and we, we worked out together and all that, it's, it's hard for me to keep up. If I curl these dumbbells like once, I'm going to be like super jacked. Or if like I do these crunches, like I'm going to have the best at six pack. Like if I do squats, I'm going to have the biggest peach and like people are going to be like, oh my God, you look amazing. But it's like, no you need to do that like a thousand times and then just when you think like you've done enough then you need to do some more oh yeah but exactly and then you just mentioned how like i think the fomo those apart from a lot of things like those are the things i can we can relate a lot because like mm -hmm. at least for me when i graduated high school 2014 i like i was like i knew like the jocks like i knew like the cheerleaders and like i knew like the Yu-Gi-Oh kids and like the pokemon kids but like at the end of the day all i did was like play call of duty when i went home so it wasn't until like after everybody graduated and they left and I was like, oh, like, what do I, like, what do I like to do? That's why, like, this time, I know it's not a good time. It's not a good time for some people because we're losing businesses, some people are losing their lives and everything. But, like, this time reminds me of the past, like, five years. And it's crazy because in my head, I'm like, wow, like, these three months are what I did for, like, five years. And, like, I wonder, like, it's amazing because I'm like, wow, if people really take advantage of this, what they'll be able to do will be crazy because it's, like, it's not, like, you're grounded and everybody else is doing everything it's like no everybody's grounded yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um that's awesome so i guess now it's like you know now tell us tell us the company like the cool tell us the coolest things that you're doing now i always see the pictures i always see the videos and everything like that and actually i want to learn more about it too yeah so i'm with a company called dance makers mm -hmm. so all these competitions and conventions that dancers go to they're all like different businesses basically mm -hmm. so Can you explain how like uh they work in like a easier way for yeah so for there's sure. say so a convention i'm just going to go by dance makers because that's okay. my company my love but all the companies are basically the same as far as the setup and like how conventions and competitions go so dancers will get there like friday afternoon there will be solos on friday nights usually senior stuff is friday nights just so mm -hmm. the younger kids get more sleep so it would be, um, but every competition is different, but seniors, solos, duets, trios, they get all those over with Friday night. Saturday morning, you wake up at, as an assistant, you wake up at about 530. Oh, oh. Um, which for sushi, that's normal. For me, <laughs> like eight o'clock pushing it. Um, but so you wake up at like 530 and you're in charge of everything except for like the lighting and stuff like oh, wow. you have to get everything together so that when the faculty gets down there you can start going so the faculty is the professionals that work for the company mm -hmm. so uh, at dance makers there's about uh 10 of them 
-hmm. and they come to every city and there's a whole schedule that goes out every weekend for the classes and usually there's 12 of us that are assistants on dance makers we're called the collective that's mm -hmm. kind of the title of the assistant program and um there's usually about five or six in each city so the company sponsors each collective member for seven cities, meaning they pay for flights, hotel, for seven cities. And then whatever other ones you go to, you pay for those. So mm -hmm. it actually kind of works out like Richmond, I can drive to, the South Carolina ones I can drive to. So um, I had competitions on some of those weekends, but you can definitely make like 12 doable. There's some people who go to like all the cities, <laughs> but with a studio, I could only go like every other weekend because right. of my studio stuff. But so we'll get up the crack of dawn on Saturday mornings. We'll set up. There will be like a drop party, which is like a warm up um, from 7:30 to 8, and then classes will start. So you'll have, uh, I think it's four classes until lunch. So mm -hmm. you'll go from 8 to 12. Every class is an hour. You'll have a lunch break for 45 minutes, and then you'll do two more classes, which are one's an hour and one's 45 minutes. Um, and then competition starts at 3:30. So classes end at 2.30, competition starts at 3.30. So as a uh, assistant, we've just danced all day. We're literally disgusting. Our hair huh. is like, there's, it's like beach hair. I can relate, honestly. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweaty and it's disgusting. Um, but we run to the bathroom. We have to be ready for our meeting at 2.45. So we have 15 minutes and this is after for every class you have to get the teacher's mic set up make sure the music's right turn on their music do all of the tech stuff and take care of the teachers you're really there for them so that they can make the class for the students as best mm -hmm. as possible um so it's all about the company's all about giving you know you give your heart sweat soul blood the, for the whole weekend so that these dancers can have the best experience possible some of them it's their 15th dance maker some of them it's their first and you have mm -hmm. to treat everyone like their family and like they've never been there before and really give them the dance makers experience so once we get dressed into all black attire to work competition by 245 we'll have a meeting for 15 minutes then we'll all go to our designated spots for competition so someone will work backstage uh, girls dressing room we have one guy on collective so if he's there guys dressing room um, and just we run the competition so everything that goes on and off stage we have to keep track of and make sure we're calling numbers um, it's a lot easier when there's solos but when there's big group dances like of 25 people and you have five groups of 25 back there it gets pretty hectic um, so you really have to stay organized and I love working backstage but some people they get really stressed out so, and that's, was, I still get stressed. I'm just good at managing stress. Mm -hmm. Other people, not so much. Um, but you know, you kind of find areas that once your dance career is over with, you know, you have all these connections from dancing. Maybe I could be a backstage director. Maybe I could work lighting. You know, they really teach you how to work with people because no matter what job you do, you're going to have to work with people. Mm -hmm. Um, and as far as the collective goes, you know, they really force us to, it's like I was saying earlier, um, there's no I in team. It's not about you. It's a lot of companies, like the company that I auditioned for in LA, the two years, it's all about the assistants. It's about how good the assistants are, flashing them in everyone's face. And that leads from when I would go and watch the assistants, that leads to feeling like, oh, I want to be like them. And dance makers really strives to not put their assistants on that pedestal because no one wants to want to be someone else. Like it's an awful feeling. Like mm -hmm. when you're like, I want to be that person, but I'm never going to be that person. How do I be that person? Like you can. Yeah, so dance makers, yeah dance makers is all about being your best self and just like it's about dance, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's about being a good person and, like, yes, if you want to pursue it, you have to be able to dance. You have to be able to take corrections quickly. And as far as the dance side of things, yeah, we have late night rehearsals because on Sunday after classes, um, competition on Saturday usually ends at like 11, 1130. 
uh, well, sometimes 10 if they get done early. Um, and then we'll have like a 30 minute rehearsal for our piece that we do on Sunday. And then Sunday we have to get up at 530 again, do the same thing again, except at three conventions over and we'll do our rap it show where we perform mm -hmm. um, two pieces, a hip hop piece and a contemporary piece. And then um, they select dances from studios that were like standouts of the weekend and they get to dance. And it's really just the, the owners of the company live in Charleston and we had like a whole collective weekend where we took our headshots and stuff and they're just such a giving company mm -hmm. and it's it's liter it's so different and for any dancer who may be watching this any of my friends who have been to dance makers will agree it's such a different experience than any other convention out there and there i mean there's hundreds of conventions mm -hmm. and i've not been to all of them but dance makers is really one of a kind and it's I it's such an honor to work for a company like them and like not a lot of companies don't pay for their assistants but dance makers pays for their assistants because they choose 12. a lot mm. of companies have 50 assistants mm. so i see like it's the one thing that apart from everything that you mentioned i like is like how you mentioned it's it's i mean honestly it's like an elite group of 12 people but one thing I got from it, it's not about you at all. Like, it's literally like, you guys are like the best of the best, but it's actually not even about you, but it's putting the best of the best. And like, I don't want to say bringing you down, but like, okay, you're the best. <sighs> now you're helping everyone. And I feel like, and I mean, you've, probably, you've explained it a bit, but I, for some people, I appreciate that can be like a shocky thing. It's like, wait a second. I thought it was going to be about me, but it's like, oh, now it's like, it's not even about me at all. Like, I'm just here for other people. So like, was that yeah. like different, but like, you, I know you mentioned it, but how is that kind of like stopping you realizing like, okay, nice, this is not about me. Like it's about Jennifer, et cetera. Yeah. And like when you're on stage assisting, especially in the first, like, I was like, it was our first city and I was like, okay, I have to look perfect. I'm an assistant, mm -hmm. but that's not at all what it's about. Like get out of your head. They always tell you get out of your head mm -hmm. because you start thinking and then you're not helping Right. Because the people on the floor when you're on stage can see that you look stressed or that you're thinking uh -huh. and like when as d dancers might understand this but like you learn a combo and then you don't when you're doing the combo you don't think about the steps like it just flows it's weird mm -hmm. like you don't think about okay now I'm gonna reach it's just like duh, duh. like it just it just goes I don't mm -hmm. know how to explain it but so when you get out of your head and you're not thinking about how you look and you're just doing it because you have to because everyone needs you to i look at my dancing now and i'm like whoa because i got out of my head and stopped thinking about myself and being selfish mm -hmm. i'm so much better because it's it's not that serious it is but it's not like if you mess up no one cares it actually makes them on the floor feel better if you mess up because they're probably messing up too mm -hmm. <laughs> so you just learn that the things that you think are a big deal aren't and the things that you thought weren't a big deal are mm -hmm. mm. perfect yeah perfect perfect so now you know you're getting ready to go to actually you mentioned it you mentioned it's you're going to, you're going to arizona but what are you yeah. going to go do there so i am going to the university of arizona to major in dance mm -hmm. i haven't decided if i'm going to minor in anything i'll probably declare that sophomore year um I'll probably minor in like interior design or fashion. Nice. Um, but yeah, the dance program, I'm super excited about it. There's 40 of us in the program, well, mm -hmm. in the freshman class. Um, so there's probably like, I think there's like a hundred and maybe 140 Whoa. amongst all the like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Wow. So not a lot of people get in like USC. I auditioned for Southern California mm -hmm. and I got an audition, which I still couldn't believe there's <laughs> 6,000 applicants and they chose 125 <coughs> to, uh, audition in person. Yeah. So I got what? an in-person audition, but then they only choose about 25 from that. Wow. Very selective. Whoa. Um, yeah, very selective. It's hard, but just to even got an audition and like work with some of the teachers there was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I love that Arizona is like, I'm going to get the college feel, but like their dance program is 
elite. Like it's, it's amazing. Nice. Nice. So, you know, during this time, we kind of, you know, we talked about how you had already graduated early and I'm going to yet talk about a bit when we teach each other when we're working out, like you had already graduated early because you knew, again, you, from the skills that you learned and kind of even going back, like there's some people don't realize that like you might've learned a skill a long time ago. It might not be effective there, but it's going to help you do what life. So like the time management skill that you learned all the way back here is not helping you or when you told me how you graduated early, but you're still doing the dancing um, and how you're traveling. But how currently has, you know, COVID-19 kind of impacted your senior year, you know, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, and these past two months, two, in yeah. two days will be two months, two months. Yeah. Um, well, I lost <clears throat> the last five cities of my Dance Makers tour. Mm. So I was supposed to go to Chicago. Um, <clears throat> like one or two other places, Baton Rouge and New Orleans. <clears throat> Those were all canceled. So that really stinks because <laughs> the program, you're only on it for a year. They choose a new 12 oh, every wow. year. Yeah. So it is, I was pretty bummed about it, but we might, they're going to tell us in four days if we're having nationals, which is at the end of June. So there will be a definite yes or no in four days and nationals. I really hope we have it. I mean, honestly, so we have like our last hurrah, but they have to think about, you know, what's safe and what's, legal obviously there's going to be hundreds thousands of people there so they have to take that into account so i can't be selfish about it um mm -hmm. but as far as um you know i graduated early and you know was okay with missing out on all the extra high school mm -hmm. stuff because that mm -hmm. just wasn't my thing but now I'm like, oh, I graduated early to sit around and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but for the month of February and stuff, like it was really good. And first semester, I only did two classes this year, total, two classes. Oh, wow. So I also want to say, if you are a high school student and your counselor tells you that colleges won't like, if you graduate early, don't listen to them. <laughs> because I'm going to an out-of-state school across the country. And they didn't care. <laughs> exactly. At the end of the day, it's so, all about the results. And it's about you. Yeah. Like if if whatever works for you, whatever is best for you, you got to do you. But um, so yeah. I mean, all my high school life, my counselors would say, "Oh no, colleges won't like that. Don't graduate early. Don't uh, do early release unless you're going to go to Wake Tech." And I was like, mm, "I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to prove you wrong." Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but. I mean, it definitely has been different for everyone. And, you know, if I think about, oh, I missed my last five Dance Maker Cities, you know, it sucks. But I also have to think about, you know, what about these people who are losing their houses? Like, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. Like, I can go to Dance Makers next year, mm -hmm. like at a city. Like, I can fly out, you know, whenever it works for me. Like, there's just such bigger things and everyone, it's not just me. Like everyone is losing something here mm -hmm. in the whole world. Like, so it makes it a little bit easier to know that it's not like, Oh, everything's being ripped away from me. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's true. That's true. And I feel like that's, that's like a realization that I got some people haven't had yet or some people are just kind of just, they're like oh my god like I can't hang out with like A, B, C, D I can't go here but it's like I was, I was talking to my brother and I was like this could have been a whole lot worse like I'm, I'm originally from Kenya but like I guess when I mean not like this when they had like the World War One, World War Two, like somebody could have just been knocking at the door saying hey Manuel you're 18 right yep okay let's go we're gonna we're gonna go to Germany like things could have been so much worse right now um yeah. But, but, you know, but kind of going on with that is as we finishing out, because I want to make sure I respect your time. The last couple, two things that I have is one. So what are some words to the youth, the people, or not even the youth, words to the people watching this? There's another question that kind of relates to this, but what's, what are the words of advice that from people that are watching this, doesn't matter what age mm -hmm. they are, whether they're parents, kids, et cetera. What can you tell them from your point of view? I... Um... One, work smarter, not harder. Mm, elaborate. You don't have to, I mean, there's kids who will go to conventions every weekend, like paying all this money just to go take class, just to get their name out there, yada, 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 yada. And 
you can only pay your way through so much. You know, if you're going to all these places and you're not working your smartest, you know, if your body, if like I've had times where like I had a couple hip injuries last year and I kept pushing through them and it got to a point where like it was painful to walk and I'm not really sure what was wrong, but I've been going to the chiropractor every six weeks now to prevent any injuries like that. But you know, I had to take a step back and be like, okay, what can I do? That's not going to hurt. And you have to listen to your body and take the time to ice and heat. And if you take like Advil or anything like that, like take it and just be diligent in the way that you, you know, work your body. Um, so I would say that's what I mean by work smarter, not harder. If that makes sense. Also, when you're at the studio and you're running back to back, back to back, back, you know, maybe the first time you don't give it your all because you're going to have to do it three more times in a row. Like you have to learn how to make it look like you're dancing your biggest, but not actually. (laughs) So I don't know if that helps my non-dancers, but, (laughs) and then I think another thing would be, um, I guess with that, with that question, and you mentioned it a couple of times, you've had a lot of people, you know, I guess the, the main point of the show is also who influenced you, who or what influenced you to influence others? And how do you plan to spread that influence? I think, I think my dance teacher temperance giving me the opportunity to teach at her studio. I teach like, five or six times a week, that opportunity Mm. has given me, has allowed me to see how much I have to offer. Now, that's not to say I like, I do not think of myself as a teacher. Like at my studio I do, but like I could not imagine going to another studio and teaching. That sounds so intimidating. But um, I think that opportunity just like sparked something that I was like, I have something to give. I don't know exactly what it is, but like I have, not everyone can say that they've been at a studio where they've been the best and knows what it feels like to step down. I don't want any of the kids in my classes to feel like they have to step down because everyone should be stepping up. And when people don't step up, that's their problem. And I'll tell that to my eight year olds. Like, if you want to be the best, you have to use every, act like you're the best in every class, not like personality wise, but dance wise. Like, you have to be smart. Like, why aren't you pointing your feet? I don't know. You've learned it. <laughs> like, you have to apply. And that opportunity has taught me how to take class better. Hmm. Teaching and seeing how people take class has taught me how to be a better class taker and really giving the teacher my full attention and like listening to every word that comes out of their mouth. So being a a teacher has taught you how to be a better student. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I feel like you're, (laughs) you're, you're a person who, I mean, I I look up to you. It doesn't matter about age or anything like that. I look up to you just because like the mindset that you have, because like when I was younger, I played sports, but coming to America didn't really play sports and how I really like got that mindset was like for working out and et cetera. But like, again, like we touched on it, but it's, you can have the best skill. You can have the best, uh, if you're okay, if you're back in your, in, in your hoop days when you're playing back, you can have the best Jordans, the best socks, the best headband, everything. Mm-hmm. But like, again, if you don't have it here, then all of it goes away. Cause there's going to be that time when you get the ball and you're like, Oh, like I actually have to do it. But it's that belief. Like you said, yeah. it's that belief where like, you have to know you're the best, not necessarily like towards other people or like, right. to kind of, like ego, but like, if you don't think you're the best, then you're not going to be able to become the best. And I also want to say before we like wrap this up, um, because like working out is such a big thing for the both of us, but I, you know, grew up doing triathlons at the Y and like was always just an active kid. Like it wasn't forced on me. I just liked it. I liked to swim, run, bike. Like I just liked it. And I think that I have a big like 
it's a big advantage for me that I know how to work out and that I have that escape. I think that with anything, if you're like a big time basketball player, a big time dancer, like you have to have something else that you enjoy Mm -hmm. because if you're fully consumed by that one thing, like it's not going to be enjoyable. Like, yeah. yeah, like, and, but it's hard sometimes because they're both <laughs> physical and I want to go work out and I'm like, I can't be sore tonight. I can't do legs today. Exactly. That part's hard too. But also like you said something, I forget what it was, but um, comparison. Mm-hmm. Like Comparison is the thief of joy. It is. And you, once I stopped, like in my middle school days, it was a big thing. I would be like, I want to be this person. Oh my gosh, look at this, but we're scrolling through social media mm-hmm. and comparison just stop like you will never be that person like just be your best self like exactly. and that's not saying that you're you're not gonna have to work for it like to be your best self but it will come it's you like be your best self and once you stop comparing like the growth is unstoppable it just is i think so that's Ah, I'm ready. I'm like, I was like a window right there. I feel like I'm about to just like go. Um, so yeah, you've had it here, I guess. We'll put a, I'm going to put all your, is it okay if people can contact you? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anything like that. Um, so it's all going to be down in the description below and people watching this. It doesn't matter if you did it. Matter of fact, I challenge you. If you're watching this, I want you to go take a class from Ashley. Don't be scared. Maybe she has been doing some like lives on IG. And I remember she did one long, I think it was like a, month ago or something. I can't remember, but yeah, it was like a month ago. Yeah. So pick her up correctively um, and respectively, but thank you for coming on. And thank you so much. This was so much fun. And yeah, guys, please reach out. If you like, I can do privates, I can do anything, but more than just dance wise, like if you need just some motivation and I'm not like a motivational speaker, I'm not trying to say that I'm not motivated every day, not a positive person every day, but I do understand like how it feels to be a teenager in this time and age trying to follow your goals and have all these like roadblocks in the way. Mm. So I can help you jump over those if you need some help. Sweet. That's all it.